Hey guys, today I want to tell you about a big update in the App Store. It is Pixelmator Pro's latest version dropping today. So exciting. If you're not familiar with Pixelmator Pro, it is an image editing app that is designed to work in concert with Apple Motion and Final Cut Pro. In my mind, it really just like kind of completes the triangle of our workflows. You know, if you work with Apple Motion or Final Cut, you probably jump into a program like Photoshop all the time, but Pixelmator Pro is another image editing app that is totally designed for Mac users like you and me. So if you're already using Pixelmator Pro, you'll see what's new today and it's very exciting. But if you're not familiar, don't worry, I'm gonna catch you up, but I'm not gonna overwhelm you with information. I'm gonna show you the five things I think you need to know about Pixelmator Pro. Let's get right into it. The first one is all about color correction. And what's new in Pixelmator Pro for those of you already in the know is that Pixelmator Pro is now supporting video formats. That means you can import and export video from Pixelmator. Why is this important? Let me show you. So here's what Pixelmator Pro looks like when you open it. Let's create a new document and you have all of your file types in here. We're gonna stick with 4K video, let's create it. Now, if you've never seen Pixelmator Pro before, you might notice how similar it looks to Final Cut and Apple Motion. I don't think that's an accident. As I said, Pixelmator Pro is an image editing app that's really designed for users like you and me. So it feels super familiar right from the beginning. So here in Pixelmator Pro, like I said, what's really exciting is that I can now drag and drop video files. And you can see I can play the file and I can trim it using these trim tools. But the real magic of video in Pixelmator Pro is the color correction features. Let me back up and show you something really quick. This is the same clip here in Final Cut. This shot was captured on a Sony FS7. And so I have the appropriate Sony LUT applied to this clip and it looks fine. I don't think it's terrible, but I don't think it looks amazing either. I can actually improve upon this significantly in Pixelmator Pro. Let's hop back over to Pixelmator Pro and let's open up these color adjustments by either clicking this icon here or hitting the A shortcut. And here's all of my color adjustment menus here in Pixelmator Pro. There are a lot of them, as you can see. I like to head down to the curves section, and just play with these curves a little bit to start. Then I'll head back up here and play with the shadows and the highlights just a little bit and the vibrance and saturation as well. There's also these color wheels that you're probably really familiar with if you're a Final Cut user. And up here, you can play with your color temperature and the tint. Now, one thing I would love to see with these color adjustments is a pop-up window for your scopes. So as you're scrolling up and down this long menu of color adjustment tools that you could keep an eye on your scopes. And if I really had my way, I would love those scopes to look just like the ones in Final Cut since those are the ones that you and I are probably most comfortable with. Just a suggestion. All right, and another thing that's really cool about the color adjustments here in Pixelmator Pro is that you can isolate different colors in your shot and play with the hue, saturation, and brightness of all of those. So if I really wanted to bring up the blues in this main guy's jacket, I could do that here. Now, once you've got your color adjustments set up, you can export these color adjustments as a LUT and bring it into Final Cut. With the last version of Pixelmator, you could do that, but you could only bring in a still frame. So you'd have to go into Final Cut, export a still frame of your raw shot, import it here into Pixelmator, make your adjustments, and then export the LUT. This workflow is so improved because you can skip the step of going into Final Cut and exporting the still frame. Plus, if different things are coming in and out of your shot, you can see what that LUT will look like apply to all of those different elements. Whereas before, you really had to be picky about which still frame you chose to make sure you were getting all the important stuff in that one frame for the still frame that you exported. So I definitely think this is a huge improvement and super exciting for Pixelmator. Good job, you guys. So to export this as a LUT, just head up to the top here where it says color adjustment and hit the circle with the three dots. And you can export this adjustment as a LUT and it's going to give you a cube file. And then back here in Final Cut, I'm going to change my camera LUT on this clip to none. I'm gonna head over to the tools menu, apply the custom LUT. And then in the inspector window, we're going to select the cube file we just created in Pixelmator Pro and apply it. And there is our custom LUT that we built 
in Pixelmator Pro. If you have Pixelmator Pro, you never have to buy another LUT again. And let me show you a side-by-side -side of the Sony LUT compared to what I just made in Pixelmator Pro. And now I can apply that LUT to all of my clips here in Final Cut, or I can do that in Apple Motion. This is a great, great workflow. All right, let's move on to the second thing I think you need to know about Pixelmator Pro, and that is with working with shapes in Pixelmator and then also bringing those shapes into motion. This is gonna wow you if you've never seen it. All right, here we are back in Pixelmator. Let's just reach for the shape tool down here in our menu. And you can see there's so many different shapes that come with Pixelmator even to start, but you can just freehand draw your own. So let's start by grabbing this heart shape and I can adjust the fill of that shape. I can make it a solid color and you've got this whole spectrum here of colors to choose from. They also have color palettes that have been professionally designed, which is kind of nice. Or of course you can make it a gradient and we can change the gradient to any of these pre-designed gradients, or you can custom make your own by grabbing these color tags and the spectrum again. And then if we wanted to freehand draw a shape, I could just grab this pen tool and I can hand draw any shape I wanted. And then once I've roughed it out, I can right click, make it editable and fine tune the points. So now I've got these two elements together and these two layers, but if I wanted to, I could select both of them in my layers pane, right click and unite these shapes. Now what I've done is I've made this entirely all one unit. This is super helpful if you're into logo design, but the fun doesn't stop here. Let me show you something that's going to blow your mind if you've never seen it. I'm going to go to file. We're gonna hit export or you can hit command D of course. Let's name this heart and under format, watch this. I can save it as a motion project. So let me do that. Did I not tell you that these apps were meant to work together? I'm gonna hit export. And then here, if I open my desktop, you're gonna see this folder here that says heart, which is what we call this project. And inside that folder is a motion file. And look, now my project is in Apple Motion with the layers as you saw them in Pixelmator Pro. I can hide that but that's not what's such a big deal about this. Look at the icon here in my layers pane. It recognizes that it's a shape. That means that I can head over here into my canvas, right click and edit points. And now that heart has points that I can edit in Apple Motion. That means I can keyframe motion on these points and it means I can apply the shapes behaviors that you can find under here under behaviors to this shape. So if I were working in Photoshop and I brought the PSD file into motion, I would see all of my individual layers, but they would all be read by motion as images. Here in Apple Motion with the Pixelmator project, I can now work with these as if they were shapes native in motion. And I think the drawing tools in Pixelmator are a little bit stronger and easier to use than they are in motion. So this workflow is so great. Imagine editing a client logo that you created in Pixelmator with shapes and then bring it in to Apple Motion, the power that that would have creatively for your project. So working with shapes in Pixelmator in motion is awesome. All right, let's move on to the number three thing I think you need to know, and that's all about text in Pixelmator Pro. So here we have another project in Pixelmator Pro. You can see that I've got live action video going here. I also created a rectangle shape with a linear burn blend mode on it. Let's add some text to this using the type tool. And you can see as I move my text around the screen, the dynamic guides and alignment tools in Pixelmator Pro are pretty awesome. So you could perfect the general layout of your composition here in Pixelmator Pro, and then again, bring it into Apple Motion by exporting it as a motion project. And then again, here in motion, look in our project pane, the rectangle of course has the shape icon next to it, but you guys look at the text. It has the text icon next to it. That means that I can modify text I create in Pixelmator Pro 
in Apple Motion. Apple Motion recognizes this text as text, not just an image like it would if it were a Photoshop file. So what does that mean? That means that if I change my mind about what I want this text to say, I can change it right here in the inspector window. I can change the font. I can change the size. I can keyframe the properties of this text and I can add text behaviors to it. That's not all. I can do more with text in Pixelmator that I really want to show you. Let's head back over to Pixelmator and I can select my text in my layers panel, right click, and I can convert it into a shape. Now, if I hit the drop down button on that in my layers panel, you can see that each letter is now a separate element. Let's export this as a motion project. And now in our project pane here in motion, you can see that all of our letters are shapes. They're no longer text, they're shapes. And that means that I can select individual letters and change the shape of them right here in Apple Motion. That is something you've never been able to do in Motion before, so that is also really cool. All right, let's move on to the fourth thing you need to know about Pixelmator Pro, and that is its machine learning capabilities. So here is another clip in Pixelmator Pro. Let's head back over to those color adjustments, and let's hit this ML Enhance button. That's machine learning, or AI, some of you might call it. And basically, it's an auto color correct feature. Now, I would probably still do some adjustments with this autocorrect, but I do love that it's like a great starting place to kind of balance your color temperatures and maybe up your contrast a little bit. And then you can go in and fine tune even more with the color correction. Here's another really great example of machine learning in Pixelmator Pro. When you drop an image into Pixelmator, like this one of this fish, Pixelmator uses AI to detect what the image is and renames it in your layers panel. So I do think that's kind of a fun feature. And then if you right click on that element in your layers panel, there's a background removal tool that works really, really well. So definitely Pixelmator's machine learning capabilities are pretty good. All right, now for the last thing that I think is a great update to Pixelmator Pro is its new templates. So if we start with a new document, you can see here that there are a bunch of templates that we can use to build different elements in Pixelmator Pro. It's very similar to Canva, but what's new about these templates is that some of them are designed specifically for video, like these movie titles here, but really any of these templates can utilize video. Now that Pixelmator supports video files, you can also send this project to motion and really make it sing with different behaviors and effects on it, or you can just export it as a video file directly from Pixelmator Pro. You guys, are you excited about the new features in Pixelmator Pro? Do you want to see more tutorials that include Pixelmator? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, let me know by giving me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. I picked out some other videos I know you're going to love, and I'll see you again.